If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. You know, one, th one thing that I have learned is the more often I talk about the program and the more often I present, it's a funny thing how there's a direct cor correlation to the amount of private money I have coming my way. So the more often, right, that we put our teacher hat on, our private money teacher hat, and teach people what private money is all about, the more private money that we are going to attract in. All right, so on this PMA Zoom, we are talking about, of course, we always talk about private money, but what we're talking about today is we're sharing some amazing aha moments and amazing questions that were asked. business, take advantage of the chat box that we have here on the Zoom and type in your question and we will uh, for sure uh, get that answered while we're here on Zoom. Anyway, the question so first, is, can we invest in real estate deals even with small amounts of money, small funds? In other words, is there a minimum investment that private lenders can loan to us? Yeah, so, you know, that's actually a great question. Um, we all should have a minimum um, because the thing is, it's going to cost you, you're going to have to pay for all the documents to be done, the closing process, et cetera, whether it's $5,000 or it's $500,000. So you do have to set a minimum and recognize what will work. So, you know, in my business, it's actually 30,000. Some people it's 10 because they can use that towards the rehab where they have smaller purchase amounts. Um, that being said, there are, I do have investors that are like family members. So I have like a, I have a grandmother and a granddaughter. I have a father and I have a son. I have a mother and I have a son. They actually are on the same note. So that in that space, they can actually use smaller amounts. So like, for instance, the, the father and the son, the son only had 5,000 but the father had 150,000. So that works. Now the math works, right? Cause now I'm not having to pay to generate those notes. So yes, you can use smaller amounts. Sometimes you have to look at it and be a little creative. I would not put together cause we don't pull private lenders funds. I would not put together different private lenders, you know, this person over here and that person over there. Um, but you do need to create a minimum investment and figure out what works for your, for your business. Excellent. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, Chaffee, you get the next one. So next question, uh, submitted by, this was submitted by Richard. Uh, I think I was saying his name, right. Uh, Silvius or Silvius. Uh, he was at the live event. Uh, the question was Chaffee, do you purchase the materials for your rehab through your LLC or does your contractor buy the materials? Well, this has been a long time um, since I've done some heavy rehabs, Jay. And, uh, you know, when you are working with a good general contractor, they purchase the materials and everything up front. And um, so I guess the real question should be, are you paying them up front and how much? And in reality, if you're working with a great contractor, you don't pay them up front. Only if you're building a new relationship with somebody, you might want to pay a small amount up front. And small amount, I would say 10% of le or less of the entire rehab up front. Um, and again, when you have a good general contractor, then they're and you're working with them, you know, they're gonna front everything. They pay everything and then they get paid via draws when you're working with them after an inspection that they did what they said that they were gonna do. Exactly. The other part of that question I'll take. Uh, the second part of the question says, if the materials are purchased by the contractor, are you expecting them to mark up the price? 
So here, so the answer is yes, but here's how it works. And so this triggers some excellent, excellent uh, advice here. When you're getting a quote or a bid from a contractor, never accept a quote or a bid with all the scope of work and then just one figure at the bottom without each line item laid out. So what we want is we want each line item. How much is the flooring? Um, that's, and that's material and labor. Uh, everything is material and labor by line item. How much are the windows? Uh, how much is the interior paint? And then at the bottom, I want my contractor to show me what is his markup or his profit. So I pay my contractor 15%. They also have a small percentage that they add on top of that for their workers comp. So that's a line item. So let me, sh let me share with you why this is so important. I have a new project. I got a new house that the, one of my general contractors is starting to work on. So I had him go out and do the line item quote. Now I already had my own budget sheet put together by uh, my project manager. So I'd already made the offer. I already owned the house. I already know how much the rehab and renovation costs should be. So now I've got my contractor going out and giving it to me by line item. How much is the flooring, interior paint, et cetera? Uh, how much is the hot water heater? He needed a new hot water heater. Um, I had to put all new plumbing underneath the house. How much is that line item for plumbing? Well, the quote comes in here by email to my office yesterday. I'm going through every line item. All right. So that's, that's one of my jobs. That's one of the hats that I wear is to make sure when the quote comes in, am I approving the quote? I'm not delegating that out. That's my business decision. I'm going to decide and, and negotiate that line item quote. Well, guess what? One of the line items came in for interior paint, including it, the, um, the ceiling, uh, painting the whole thing, interior paint and the ceiling of the house. Well, this house has only got 975 square feet. His line item for the interior paint came in at $6,100. And I'm asking myself, where do you get that strong marijuana to smoke to come up with that kind of dollar figure for interior paint on a 975 square foot house? So I sent him a little email back and I said, let me remind you how I pay my own crews for interior paint. Well, cost of paint has gone up since COVID for years. I used $3 a heated square foot. I'm not talking, space on the walls. I'm talking heated square feet that you walk around on. We use $3 a square foot for years. I now use $4 a square foot because prices are going up. Well, even at $4, that's coming in at $3,888. So he's about a little over, you know, $21, $2,200 off budget. So I send my contractor back. By the way, he came in fantastic on some line items. I'm getting a brand new sliding glass door for 800 bucks. I budgeted 1200 bucks. Good deal on that. And I called him out on that and I said, man, that's a very competitive price. So I emailed him and I told him, I said, look, we're off on this line item. And um, so then he picked up the phone and he called me. And after we had our pleasantries, he said, Man, I don't know what I was smoking, but I got that interior paint line wrong, didn't I? I said, yep, you sure did. And he did. We got the corrected quote that uh, came back in. So look, that's an example of you can't set it and forget it, right? You have got to inspect. You got to measure. You got to be looking at everything that's going on there on your dollars. So anyway, a uh, good question there from uh, Richard. Uh, Rose submitted the question, how long do most people need for credit repair? Well, the question that Rose was speaking of there is there's a credit repair service that we use called screenthetenant.com. And that's Paul Ritter up in uh, Pennsylvania and, um, been using him for years. But anyway, we use the credit repair when we're selling a house on rent to own to a lease purchase buyer, and we're actually helping them get ready for a mortgage. 
So the cost of that is $99 a month. And typically it takes six to nine months in credit repair. And the average increase in score is about 85 points. So in answer to the question, how long needed for credit repair, it really depends on how much credit repair they need, but that's the average uh, length of time. Uh, Tim Johnson submitted the next question. He says, you gave an example of a tired landlord house that you bought. You bought it uh, from them in seven days. We closed in seven days, all cash. And I told the seller of the house that I would honor the lease term that is between the landlord, the tired landlord, which by the way, side note, tired landlords are one of my hottest categories. I just bought a new list of tired landlords yesterday uh, because that's such a hot list right now. But anyway, um, I told the seller that I would honor the uh, lease term between the seller, the landlord, and the current tenant. The question from Tim is, did you let them receive rent until the lease is up, or did you honor the lease by letting the tenant stay until the lease was up? So the first part of that question, did you let them receive rent until the lease was up? Well, if you're talking about the landlord receiving the rent, the answer is no. Whoever owns the house gets the rent. So here's a writer downer. What we did is we had my real estate attorney draw up what's called an assignment of rents, not an assignment of rents. We just saw, uh, drew up an assignment of the rent or the rental agreement. So that is, so we didn't have to change anything with the lease agreement. We just had an assignment drawn up that the seller signed and I signed, which assigned the lease over to my company. And so now the tenant, is pay, making us rental payments. So look, there's a big lesson. There's a big lesson here in this story. I, I have bought three houses within the past 90 days that came with tenants from tired landlords. And guess what? The tenants are still in the house. Why did I do the deals? Because the rent coming in is giving me a positive cash flow. Uh, in in uh, relation to the underlying debt that I'm paying the private lender. By the way, uh, these were free and clear houses. So there was no subject to mortgage to take it over. So the lesson to learn here is even when you're talking to a seller that's got a tenant in it, don't be afraid to inherit that tenant if uh, the math makes sense and you're going to have a positive uh, you're going to have a positive cash flow. One um, one quick aside on that from a lesson learned, Jay, just to yep. share with everyone. Sure. Do indeed do indeed make sure you get the rent rolls. And now now tell everybody what, what you mean by that. Evidence that the tenant has been paying them. So um I actually this is two times I got burned, two times were little old Southern Bell ladies that just were sugary, sweet. They were all sweet tea. Um, but they, I got, I got burned on, um, inheriting a tenant. I've, I've had great inheritance of tenants, by the way, but I got burned on inheriting a tenant by the little old lady who just assured me upside down and inside out that they were great tenants and they always paid and those tenants never paid. <laughs> like there's no way they just stopped paying that day. They never paid. Uh, that's so that's make sure so you bad. get, make sure you get the rent rolls. It's really important. So, so the lesson learned is it's okay to uh, keep the tenant unless they're little old ladies. Then you got to get rid of them. <laughs> no, it's actually the little old ladies are the sellers, Chaffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> got it. Bless their heart. <laughs> there was some blessing their heart going on. Woo! Uh, excellent advice, Crystal. Excellent advice. Thank you for, uh, thank you for sharing. Um, are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.